So in this video I want to look at programming a couple of 2716s with my GQ4X programmer. Uh, this is an older USB programmer. I've had it for quite a while and it's one of the ones that will actually program 2716. So let's go ahead and get it plugged in. Uh, I had, the printer drivers are installed in Windows 10. They're unsigned. I've had to go through the process of, of installing unsigned drivers uh, in my Windows 10 build. I actually have a video or two that document how to do that. Uh, because 2716s typically require a 25 volt VPP uh, with some current to it, you often need to supplement the 5 volt power on the USB with a higher voltage. I have a 9 volt DC power pack here that I plug in to supplement the 2716 voltage. So we've got the programmer at this point on the machine, we, we, we heard it load uh, when I plugged in the USB. So let's go ahead and open up the programming software. I'm using the GQ USB Pro or USB Prog. It, it had to go out and actually connect to the device, uh, the programmer, before it would let me move it here in frame. But there is the GQ USB programming software. Uh, it found my hardware. It's got the same device that I defined last time. Let's go set ahead and look at devices and see if we can find something a little closer to what this really is. It is an AM, I believe, 2716. We're going to search for EPROMs, AM 2716. And it is the... I don't have enough light here to be able to see this. Let me click on some supplemental light. It is an AM, it's just an AM2716. So we're going to go ahead and just pick the AM2716 device. Uh, no adapter required for dip chip. So it, it says, yeah, there's no adapter required in the programming socket, but it still wants me to apply external power, uh, which is what we did down there with the incoming 9 volts DC. So let's go ahead and I'm going to drop the part down in the programming socket. If I can get it to go in, pins are a little bit askew. It can be kind of hard sometimes to get a part into the socket. Hopefully it's in. And let's just do a blank check at this point. So we can do a blank check. It found the chip is blank. I think you saw the, the VCC light show up here as it verified it. I'll go ahead and blank check it again. You should see the VCC light down here light up. It powers the part up. It also powered up VPP it looks like. I think yeah VPP goes to 5 volts during read as well. So the next thing I need to do is load up the image we want to program and that image happens to be this SDZ80 utils hex file here. And I've got that open in Notepad++ already. Uh, it is a hex file. And as we can see here in the hex file, if you know how to read these, the starting address is, uh, is the part in blue here is 0800 hex. So this was compiled to live in memory at 0800 hex. However, the EEPROM itself, sitting here in the socket, starts at 0000, 000, 000 hex. So we need to offset that. And let me demonstrate why we need to do this. Let's go ahead and load up. The image here, let me get, let's see, I think I've already still got the path maybe in the buffer here I do. So there's the image we want to load. I'm going to say load it. And what it's going to do is it's going to load this text file assuming a file offset of zero. So it's going to load it wherever it thinks it, it, it you know exists. In this case starting at address 0800. If we just load this up and look at the buffer we'll discover the buffer's empty. Where it tried to load this was above this address space. This ends at 07FF. So we need to offset this entire image to get it into where the EEPROM exists in the programmer. Uh, the EEPROM can then be put in the system at, at, at a spot where it's decoded to start at 0800. Hex and it'll work just fine. But we need to load this so we get it in the, you know, in the buffer here for the actual EEPROM. So let's go back and load again. It's going to be the same file. And in this case, I want this first byte right here to load at address 0000. So I'm going to tell it to offset by negative 800 hex. Negative 800. We'll tell it to subtract 800 hex from the addresses here. 
uh, which should put that first byte at address zero. And let's go ahead and load it. And we saw the buffer load up here. We can see it starts with a jump to 0850, the C3508, C3508. It's got a bunch of nulls. Uh, then there's a 53, 44, 2D, 53. So it looks like we've got the image in memory. We can see that there, there, it's actually an ASCII string up front here. And we can see that this loaded really through uh, 480, about, four, about 480 hex. And so here, so because the offset is 0, 0800 hex, if we add 0, 0400 to it, we get 0, C100. Uh, and through 8E, an 8F would be right there, and it ends in a 32. If I followed this correctly, it ends in a FFC932. FF. I'm confused. Uh, 3E FFC9. 3E FFC9. Oh, that 32 there is the is the the row checksum. Sorry, that 32, and these aren't the actual value that gets programmed. They're a checksum for the row, I believe. So no, we've loaded correctly. We're happy with that. We've got the part over here in the programmer. We've got supplemental power added. We should now be able to go to program, and so I want to write. Uh, this content to the ROMs. Let's see if we can get it to write. We should see VPP light up. Looks like it verifies. Well, that programmed really quick. Like I say, it looks like that verified. We can go in here and do a verify. It says the verify pass is good. So this is obviously a later generation, 2716, because it programmed very quickly. The, the Earlier generation parts were 50 milliseconds per address uh, to program, and, and they, in my mind, were slower than that. Let's go ahead and write the second device here. So we're going to program it here or write it. And it verified it, and it thinks it's happy. So it says I've got two 2716s programmed. If we do a verify with an open socket here, it should have. Actually, programming open socket should fail because it can't program. That makes sense. Uh, let's see if I can find an old school national part here. Like one of the originals, like this guy right here. I've got a whole, I don't know if this will show up on camera, a whole tray here of 2716s. Uh, various manufacturers, various dates. Those are all freshly out of the UV. Uh, race oven. So there's a national 2716 national semiconductor. It's a 450 nanosecond part. This would be one of the parts that I worked on when I was at national. If we do a verify, it should fail. Actually, we need to select the right part. So it's an MN2716. Let's see if it's in here. MN2716. Didn't find it. 2716. Might be this MM. I want to say national was typically NM. Let's just take the generic 2716 in this case. So. 2716 would help. I happen to know the part that I have there is a 25 volt part just from experience external power needed if right fail see help for power adapter information like I said I've got a 9 volt adapter DC plugged in there uh, let's go ahead and write this and see if we can actually write this national part We wrote it. Wow, I guess 2716's program faster than I remember them programming. I, it's happy. It thinks the National Park programmed as well. So we've programmed three different EEPROMs here. 
this 450 part is pretty slow. I think it'll actually be too slow for the application. I'm going to put it in. Uh, but anyhow, th there's a quick demonstration of using a USB programmer to program a 2716. More modern USB programmers do not program, you know, just don't deal with 2716s, the older 25 volt parts. So be careful when you buy a USB programmer. Like I said, I've had this one for years and I've kept it and learned how to install the un unsigned drivers into Windows 10 in order to be able to use it because it gives me coverage all the way back to the 2716s. So hopefully that gives you a nice uh, video and, and kind of a demonstration of using a USB programmer to program a 2716. So with that said, uh, I'll wrap this one up here and we'll talk soon.